Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, The Mighty Bjorn, and today for you I have an Armored Warfare replay, and I'm only featuring myself today in the Tier 5 Premium IT-1, and this is PV Hardcore Operation Stormy Winter, not to be confused with Stormy Daniels. Anyway folks, let's talk about the vehicle here, and the whole premise is in the 1960s, Russia would begin development on two designs for an ATGM based tank. The plan was a tank. At the time, many countries around the world was experimenting with the use of guided missile based weapon systems on various vehicles, particularly tanks, and Russia was no different at the time. There'd be two different vehicle designs. One vehicle design would be based on the T-62 chassis. The vehicle was designated as Object 150. Later it would be... Now, forgive me folks, I'm probably going to screw this pronunciation up. Is Trib... B... Till... Tankoff. God, that sounded horrible. But it translates as Tank Destroyer. The other vehicle was Object 287, which was based on the new T-64 chassis. <laughs> Both vehicles were tested in 1964, and the IT-1 would come out on top. That's the vehicle you see here today. The hull of the IT-1 is a mod unmodified T-62 hull, but a new turret was designed for the vehicle, the turret would be of a flattened dome design and would house the main armament and a PKT 7.62 millimeter machine gun for self-defense needs. The main armament is the 2KA launcher system firing the 3M, 3M7 Drakon missile. The Drakon missile was a radio-controlled guided missile, so it's not a wired control. It's, it's done remotely with radio waves. The IT act, the IT one actually had great optics for daytime operations, but really suffered in night operations. The UPN five night vision system only gave roughly a four to six hundred meter viewing range at night and actually really was not very good at the time about 220 IT ones were produced but the missile system proved impractical so while the vehicle did see some limited production and service its service life would actually be very short from what I can tell its service life was actually roughly only two years when it finally entered service in 1968 it looks like it was in service from 68 to 70. Now that being said, there was a lot of flaws with the system in itself. The big one being is the missiles were actually quite large and quite heavy and came in a canister. The canister, the idea was is, is the canister would be loaded onto the launcher system. The launcher system itself would actually load down into the vehicle, uh, not load, but would retract down into the vehicle and the missile would be attached to the launcher system with an auto-loading system. There was also problems with the auto-loading system as in the case of if the auto-loading system was knocked out for some reason, there was no way of manually loading the gun, unlike the current T-72 or T-80s that would later enter production, as well as the T-64 for that matters. The canister itself also had problems. The canister was meant to encase the missile, to protect the missile from dirt, impact, things of that nature. And the idea was is, is when the missile launcher system raised up into a ready fire position, the canister would automatically be kicked off the missile by the wings. The wings were automatically deploying. They automatically opened up and folded out when prepared to fire. The problem is, is sometimes that would not actually happen. The, the canister would not kick off 
as well as sometimes even if the canister did kick off, the wings would only partially extend outward. Now that being said, here in Armored Warfare, it is actually a rather good tier 5 tank destroyer. It hits like a fucking hammer, and honestly, with its very low suspension, uh, very low silhouette, and actually... Believe it or not, quite decent armor for a tank destroyer, especially when you compare it to the Weasel. Um, this is literally probably the most Soviet thing in armored warfare. Or at least, damn near the most Soviet thing. It is, it's not a bad tier 5 premium. That being said, I don't know if there's actually a way for anybody to get the IT5, IT1 anymore. Um, maybe they put it for special sometimes, but this was actually... An anniversary vehicle that all you had to do was log in I think play like three battles and he got the vehicle for nothing and it's just not bad anyway let's go over the final battle results here so I would do 10,677 damage spot four enemy vehicles and actually destroy nine vehicles spotting range actually really isn't that bad for being a tank destroyer but there's definitely better options out there let alone it's also a Russian vehicle. So the the spotting range just, it just works, folks. It just works. But anyway, folks, that is my Armored, Re Armored Warfare replay of the IT-1. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in. And have yourself a wonderful day.